Hello, welcome to this lesson on vectors. I'm assuming you've seen and understood the introductory lesson on scalars and vectors, so we can continue from that. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the notation we use for vectors and the notation for the magnitudes of vectors. Then we're going to take a look at how we multiply a vector by a scalar. Let's start with notation. We generally use letters to represent vectors. And if we do that and just write the letter down, it may not be clear if the letter represents a vector or a scalar. And one way to clarify that is to draw an extra symbol. So a very common way of doing this is to put a small arrow, usually pointing to the right, over the letter. So if you see a letter with an arrow over it, it means the letter represents a vector. Another way of doing it is simply to use an underlined letter. And that distinguishes vectors from scalars which don't have arrows or underlines. An example, you know the equation for momentum P equals mv. Strictly speaking this is a vector equation so we should write P underlined or P with an arrow but I'm going to use underlining. P underlined equals m times v underlined. P momentum and v velocity are vectors. We underline them, we indicate that they are vectors. Mass is a scalar, it doesn't need any underlining. Let me point out that the notation is not always used if the meaning is clear and you are expected to use a bit of common sense in interpreting things to decide whether something is a vector or a scalar. The other bit of notation you should know about is how we represent the magnitude of a vector. Let's give an example. Supposing we have a velocity vector, something is moving to the left with a speed of 4.5 meters per second. For simple left-right movement, we often have a sign convention. We use positive to mean going to the right and negative to mean going to the left. So if this is a speed of 4.5 meters per second and is moving left, we would say velocity v equals minus 4.5 meters per second. The minus gives you the direction to the left. The magnitude of this vector is simply 4.5 meters per second. And we have a special shorthand way of writing the magnitude. We just use two vertical lines and we put the symbol for the vector in between. So if you saw this, vertical lines with V in between, you would read that as the magnitude of V equals 4.5 meters per second. That's all there is to it. Notice the magnitude of any vector is always a positive scalar value. Don't look at something like minus 4.5 and think the magnitude is minus 4.5. 4.5 is the magnitude, 4.5 meters per second, I should say. The negative sign is being used to give direction information. It's not part of the magnitude. The magnitude is a positive scalar. OK, let's talk about how we can multiply a vector by a scalar. First of all, by a scalar which is a pure number. What do I mean by that? I mean a number without units. So a simple number like 6 or 2.8 or minus 0.5. These are pure numbers with no units. We'll talk about how we multiply by scalars which have units very soon. So let's do an example. Let's suppose we've got a vector. I'm calling it A. Represent it with an arrow here. Let me tell you the magnitude of this vector. It's 40 newtons. So it's a force vector in that direction shown by the arrow. The question is, what do we get if we multiply this vector, A, by a scalar, pure number? 0.6, for example. What is 0.6 times A? Now, if you want to think this out for yourself before I give you the answer, pause the video now. OK, well, let me tell you what the answer is. The first thing to note is the answer is a new vector and I've shown it here and I'm calling it B so we produce a new vector which is equal to 0.6 times A 
How big is this vector? Well, the magnitude of it is simply 0.6 times the magnitude of A. Let's, I've written that down formally here. Let's go through it. The magnitude of this new vector we've made is 0 0.6, that was the scalar, times the magnitude of A. That's 0 0.6 times 40 newtons, which is 24 newtons. So this new vector is represented by a smaller arrow. It's 0 0.6 times as big as the arrow that we had for A. The magnitude is only 24 newtons. You will note the direction hasn't altered. The direction is the same. They're pointing at the same angle. And we say the direction is parallel to the original direction of A. So multiplying by this positive scalar hasn't changed the angle, but it's changed the magnitude. Let's do another one. Same vector A, magnitude 40 newtons. This time I'm going to multiply A by minus 2.5. What do you think the answer will be? If you want to think about that before I tell you, pause now. Well, I've drawn it. First of all, there are two operations. We've produced a new vector. That's the first thing to note, perhaps. I've called it C. Multiplying A by minus 2.5 has given a new vector called C. I've drawn it here. You'll notice two things. First of all, it's much bigger than the original vector. It's actually two and a half times as long. That arrow is two and a half times as long as the arrow for A. And also the direction has been reversed. A points one way, C points directly the opposite direction. And the minus sign is the thing that has reversed the direction. Whenever we multiply a vector by a negative quantity, we say the direction is reversed. So there are two things that's happened. The direction has been reversed, and then the magnitude has been increased by two and a half times. So if we call this new vector, which is point uh, which is minus 2.5 a, we call it c, then the magnitude of c is simply 2.5 times the magnitude of a. 2.5 times 40 newtons is 100 newtons. The direction has been reversed. We have a word for it. We say the direction is anti-parallel to a. And that's a result of the negative sign, the minus sign. So here's another one. This is a very important example. What happens if we multiply a vector by minus 1? Here's an example vector. Let's call it v, a velocity vector in the direction shown. Let's suppose the magnitude of v is 30 meters per second. What is minus 1 times v? Which we, I hope you see, is exactly the same as saying what is minus v? What is minus v? What is minus 1 times v? Again, if you want to pause and think about the answer before I tell you, you can do it now. And I hope it was fairly obvious that the new vector, first of all, is in the opposite direction because of the minus sign. And the magnitude hasn't changed because the, mag the size of the scalar was 1. So the minus sign reverses the direction. The magnitude of minus v is simply the scalar times the magnitude of v. Well, that was 1 times 30 meters per second. So the magnitude is still 30 meters per second. The direction is anti-parallel to v. And if we negate a vector, that means multiply it by minus 1 or take the negative value, that means we reverse it without changing the magnitude. We reverse direction. OK. Finally, let's talk about how we can multiply a vector by a scalar that does have units. And a good example of that is working out momentum. So if we have a mass of 60 kilograms and the velocity of the mass is 10 meters per second going south, I could draw an arrow to represent the velocity, which I've done on the right. And the question is, what is the value of m times v? And in this case, we're taking a vector, which is v, and multiplying it by a scalar which does have units. m is a scalar with units of kilograms. So 
what is m times v? If you want to try answering for yourself, you can pause the video now. And the answer is, it's 600 kilogram meters per second south. I hope you got that and I hope you can see why. Let's go through it though. First of all, it's a new vector produced. I've drawn it on the right. It's m times v. It's a momentum vector. What is the magnitude of this new vector? Well, I multiplied the vector with a magnitude of 10 meters per second by 60 kilograms. The magnitude of m times v, which is the new vector, the momentum vector, the magnitude is simply the scalar quantity, which is 60 kilograms, times the magnitude of v. 60 kilograms times 10 meters per second gives 600 kilogram meters per second. Note that we have to multiply the units together as well, because we're producing a new type of vector. It's a momentum vector, not a velocity vector. So the units must be momentum. The direction of this new vector is simply parallel to v. It's got to be, we just multiplied v by a scalar, a positive scalar quantity, and that doesn't change the direction. So, we've just got to be careful with units when we multiply by a scalar that has units. Some students say, shouldn't this arrow for, mom for momentum be 60 times longer than the arrow for v? Because you multiplied by 60. And the answer is no, it shouldn't. There are different types of vectors. One is velocity, one is a momentum. If we wanted to draw the arrows to scale, we'd have to have two different scales. We'd have to do something like this. We'd have to say, OK, for velocity, let's let one centimetre represent one metre per second. Then I draw this line ten centimetres long. For Momentum, we have a different scale. F maybe choose one centimetre is, is 50 kilogram metres per second. It could be any value. You choose whatever is convenient. It's not linked to the first one. That would give you a line here 12 centimetres long. But you could choose any scale values you want. It's not like multiplying by a pure number, though. If you multiply by a pure, num pure number of 60, then your new vector is 60 times bigger and the arrow would be 60 times longer. But if it's got units, you're multiplying a vector with a scalar that has units, you don't do that. OK, in the next lesson we'll talk about how to add and subtract vectors. So thanks for watching.